strategy message, USS Canali to USS Cheyenne. We are under attack by Borg forces. Repeat, Borg forces. We intercept the two Borg vessels heading on a direct course for Sector 001. Subspace something is too weak. Have an over to Marine Starfleet Command. If you can read us, do not repeat. Do not send help. We are lost. Warn Starfleet. The Borg have returned. Repeat, the Borg have returned. O seven thirty means O seven thirty, cadet. Sit down. First, the captain wanted me to convey his regrets for not being here himself. As I'm sure you've heard, Starfleet is amassing an armada in Sector 001 to defend against the latest Borg incursion. We, or rather our ship, is on her way to join them. Starfleet has successfully defeated the Borg twice before, and we have every expectation of successfully stopping them now. However, given the probability of armed conflict, the captain has ordered that all non-essential personnel, including visiting Starfleet cadets, be transferred off the ship to a safer venue at the medical research facility on Marnus III. Please have your gear packed and be at Shuttle Bay 3 in 30 minutes. Dismissed. Cadet Furlong. A moment, please. The captain has denied your request to stay on board, Cadet. I'm sorry. The massacre 10 years ago at Wolf 359 was a great tragedy for the Federation. I was only one year out of the academy when it happened. A lot of my classmates died there. Now, each year I get older and they stay the same. I understand your need for justice. I'm sorry. Shuttle Bay 3 in 30 minutes. How old were you when your father was killed? Nine, ten years old, and you're still not over it? Perhaps I should introduce myself. I imagine you've heard of me, though, Q. It's short for Q. It was I, you know, who introduced Picard to the Borg, and it's because of me that ten years ago the Borg came to Wolf 359 and found that fleet of ships and found your father and killed them all. At 0800 hours during the Battle of Wolf 359, the USS Righteous such a noble name, Righteous, was hit by an unknown Borg weapons discharge and vaporized. Vaporized. <sighs> no trace. Nothing to bury, nothing to mourn. The Borg took it all away from you in an instant. I understand your desire for justice. They don't, though, do they? But I do. You want action. You want to avenge your father's death. You want to kill Borg. What sentient. Yet still barbaric, bipedal hominid wouldn't. You can run away with the others like a scared trog, or you can come with me, cadet. The choice is yours. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'm offering you a chance to go and kill some Borg. Do you want to or not? It looks like I misjudged you. You're only interested in saving your own skin. And to think I went to so much trouble to arrange it all. Come on, cadet, you're... Q, intruder alert, deck six. Don't even bother. A 
Excellent choice, monsieur. Keep the phaser, you're going to need it. And take this too. Be careful now, don't lose it. I only made one. Time! Oh, 0758, sir. Keep those phases firing, and where are my photon torpedoes? Armed and ready, Captain. Have a look. I can't see you. Let's see if we can shake them up a little, Ensign. Initiating Delta attack, sir. I'm reading the small weakness in the shields. Shields are holding fine, but power is down 10%. Weapons having no effect. Damn, they've adjusted their shields already. Why is it always the difficult species that are the most adaptable? The Borg adapt their environment to suit their needs. True adaptability involves changing oneself to suit their environment. I'm so glad you cleared that up. Recognize this place? You should, to keep a picture of it on your wall. The bridge of the USS Righteous. Your father's ship. The Tolstoy just took a major hit. This is him, isn't it? Well, I can see the family resemblance. I think she's pulling away. The Kyushu's coming on strong. Melbourne and Saratoga have lost power. Tolstoy, Kyushu, Saratoga, Melbourne. Recognize the names? Do you know where you are, cadet? Captain! Intruder alert. Security, isolate the ops console now. Uh, that's right, 10 years ago, Wolf 359. Security! Look at him. He's barely older than you are. He shouldn't be at security. But four hours ago, the real security officer, Lieutenant Sprint, was killed. And this first year, Ensign had to take his place. And because of his inexperience, everybody on board, including your father, will be killed. The phases are useless. Just isolate the panel now. If Lieutenant Sprint were still alive, he might be able to save the ship. But he's been dead for four hours. No wonder they don't want him on the bridge. Come on, can't you move faster? <laughs> Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Thaddeus Quint. He actually tried to save Sprint's life, but as you can see, he failed the old goat. <laughs> well, what'd you expect? He's a doctor, not a security officer. Still, if he had only had a little more creativity. But he didn't. He's bypassed the security lockout. <laughs> Doctor, he's dead. Shield mutation is shifting on its own. Shields are dropping. Uh-oh. I need shields back up now. Death in battle. If it were a Klingon, he'd be ecstatic. Ooh, I like this guy. Captain, there's a tight beam transmission going directly to the board queue. Computer is uploading data about emergency transporters. Anyone near Jeffrey 6, we need manual power rerouted through the secondary couplings. It's too late. The board cube is firing. Invasive maneuvers. So, now that you've seen your father die, are you ready to avenge his death? Or would you like to try something different? How about a chance to prevent his death? Lieutenant Sprint was killed four hours before the Righteous even got to Wolf 359. But if the good Dr. Quint had been able to save Sprint four hours before, then Sprint would have been able to save the righteous, and you would have grown up in the loving company of your father, and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. What say we give the old goat a second chance to save Sprint's life? You're not afraid of a little space-time continuum meddling, are you, cadet? No, I thought not. Shall we? This is Lieutenant Sprint. Do you think he knows he's gonna die? I don't think so. Don't bother saying hello. Just makes saying goodbye that much harder. Time, Mr. Furlong. Oh, 400 hours, sir. Is the cube within sensor range yet? Coming up now, Captain. Match speed. Stay with it. Setting a pursuit course. Shields up. Intruder alert. Sprint, look out! Shall we dance? Sprint, make a choice. Oh, now that was clever. I turned you into Lieutenant Sprint, so I could be Quint and save you. Him, you, what, whatever. So that you could save the righteous. And then you go and you get yourself killed anyway. I mean, really, it's not worth meddling with the timeline if you're just going to make things worse. 
I hope you're not one of those passive contemplative types. Try again. Excuse me, am I mistaken? But isn't there a Borg on the bridge trying to control the ship? What are you gonna do? Scan it to death? <laughs> Quint wasn't clever enough to think of it. Good thing I am. The board cube is pulling ahead. It's ignoring us completely. Not speed. Keep us within close range. Remember, a sprint should have died right here. Everything you do in his place from this moment on changes history. Invigorating, isn't it? Meddling with fate. Lieutenant, are you all right? Sprint? <laughs> He's an ox. Nothing scares him. And nothing hurts him. Isn't that right, Lieutenant? <laughs> there are all kinds of pain, Lieutenant. Don't let the fact that you are Bajani prevent you from acknowledging the hurt. Oh, please. Captain, coded message coming in from Admiral Hansen. He's ordering us to proceed with all speed to rendezvous with the rest of the fleet at Wolf 359, requesting us not to engage the Borg. Until then, maintain radio silence until contacted. Helm laying a course for Wolf 359. Pull ahead of the Borg cube and then match speed. Aye, sir. ETA at current speed, four hours, five minutes. Good. We don't want them to get there before we do. And Targus, get that thing off my bridge. Yes, sir. are useless. Captain, we're hailing the Borg ship. Shields are dropping. Uh-oh. There's a tight beam transmission going directly to the Borg cube. Computers uploading data about emergency transport. The Borg are firing! We're gonna die! And it's your fault. Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. <laughs> He's got control of tactical. The phasers are useless. Captain, we're hailing the board ship. Shields are dropping. Uh oh. There's a tight beam transmission going directly to the board cube. Computers uploading data about emergency transport. The board are firing. We're gonna die. And it's your fault. Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. If I told you to jump into a Signian vortex, would you do it? You're a sentient being of sorts. Try using this. You know, all this space-time manipulation does take some effort on my part. It's not that easy. I'd appreciate it if you'd make a little effort, too. Captain, he's hailing the Borg cube. Shields are falling. Borg cube is firing. Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. I'm okay. Definitely dead this time. Then get him definitely off my bridge this time. Mr. Sprint, reconfigure your security console so you can control Tactical B. Then meet me down at the computer core. I want to secure this ship in case the Borg try and board us again. Good shooting. How about... Quick thinking, Quint. Good work, Quint. Nobody ever gives me any credit for anything I do. That's because we don't like you, Quint. I think we can all save our hostility for the Borg where it will be better placed, don't you? Let me ask you something, Baraka. Do you just spout these platitudes? Or are you deluded enough to actually believe in them? Come on, Quint. No matter how hard you try, you're not going to change my mind. I still like you. <laughs> he kissed me.
you staring at? Oh, of course, your father. This must be strange for you, knowing he may be about to die, knowing this may be your only chance to talk to him, tell him all about yourself, about the years since he died. I wouldn't if I were you. When he looks at you, all he sees is Lieutenant Sprint. I don't think he'd understand. Hey, Sprint. What, are you having one of your Bajani trances? See? Lieutenant Sprint, the console, please. If you're just gonna stand there and do nothing, why not try learning something? You'd better hurry. The captain doesn't like to be kept waiting. Sprint, I'm the one whose brain cells have been rewired, not you. Where's your mind? It's a good thing you only touched the delimiter. What happened? I don't know. I think he grabbed the power nodule. What? How is he, Doc? I'm sorry. He's just too stupid to live. What do you think this is supposed to be? Jewelry? It's a special gift from me to you. There's no other tricorder like it in the known universe. Use it! Grab the power nodule. What? How is he, Doc? I'm sorry. <sighs> You're just too stupid to live. I don't think you were paying attention. Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing they teach you in systems tech? Make sure it ain't plugged in. I'd say that must have hurt, but I know you don't feel pain the way humans do. Just be careful. You got a one in three chance now. Care to try your luck? Or do you want to double check? Vanderpoke the Sprint. I'm waiting for you down in the core room, Lieutenant. Now! It's just his way. You'll get used to it. Yeah, but I'd still hurry if I were you. The captain definitely does not like to be kept waiting. You do know how to get to the core room, don't you, Sprint? Destination code. Thank you, my good man. Sprint, we're waiting. I believe you're wanted in the computer core control room. Oh, mercy. 
mercy. <laughs> Why? Because I can. <laughs> You're not making very good use of your time. really need to learn to make better use of this equipment. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting the difficulties of dealing with your limited humanoid mind. If it's not right in front of you, you don't notice it. I've given you a tool to see beyond the superficial veneer of reality to a deeper level of knowledge and understanding. And you ignore it. I should be hurt. But then again, I'm not the one who keeps getting killed. Hey, buddy, I guess I beat you down here. Mr. Sprint, I am a very tolerant captain, except when it comes to punctuality. I suggest you become more familiar with this ship's layout so you don't keep us waiting again. Do I make myself clear? We were trying to route all of the ship's controls through the security systems as an extra precaution, but something kept rejecting all of our attempts to access the security programs. And that's when we found this. It's obviously Borg, but how did it get on the ship, and what is its purpose? It seems to be tied in directly to the security systems, locking us out. Question is, how do we remove it? Sprint, you're the security officer. What do you think? Mr. Sprint is right. Until we know more about Borg technology, I don't think we should make any attempts to interfere with the implant directly. Captain, we were within transporter range for only 6.7 seconds. Mm -hmm. I don't see how the Borg transported to the bridge and implanted the circuit unless... Unless there were two of them. If there is another Borg on this ship, he's found a way to screen against our usual senses. I'll get Targus to scan against anomalies. See what you can do to help. Targus, enough. You've got the scan so sensitive, they're going to alert us if a particle of dust falls. If that particle of dust falls off a Borg, then I want to know about it. You're too cautious. You're too lax. Sprint, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it weren't for me, you guys wouldn't have had any fun at the Academy. <laughs> if it weren't for me, you guys wouldn't have graduated from the Academy. <laughs> what? Well, Lieutenant Furlong, Lieutenant Sprint, and Ensign Targus. Somehow, that's not quite how I pictured it. That's not your fault. Every time I see that thing, it reminds me of how much courage it must have taken for you just to be here. And of how much we both owe Sprint. Just 
Don't let Sprint here. His head's big enough already. What exactly do you owe him? You'll spend the rest of your life a slave to technology. I'm not a slave to it. In six months, a year at the most, I won't even need this. In three hours, four at the most, we won't even be alive. Unless we're Borg. <sighs> Dr. Quinn is testing the boundaries of the humanoid ability to maintain affection for him, which he thinks he's not worthy of. So what he does is he tries to make everyone dislike him. Well, he's very good at that. He's right about one thing. We could end up as Borg. And I know the last thing I want to have happen to me is to be assimilated into the Collective. We won't let it happen to any of us better dead than Borg. Agreed? Even Quint. Not even Quint deserves to be Borgified. But the Borg definitely deserve Quint. We got him. Somewhere in Jeffrey's Tube 6. Sprint, furlong. Take a couple of fully charged phasers, flush out the Borg, and neutralize them. Understood? Yes, sir. Systems. I can't, Captain. Five seconds. I'm locked out. Four, three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Meddling with things you don't understand again? You know, I think I'm learning something here. Hubris. That's what I don't like about you people. Your ignorance of the working of the galaxy is unparalleled, and yet you continue to blunder ahead as if you knew what were going on. The Borg, on the other hand, really seem to know what they're about. If only they had more personality. In fact, if they had any personality, I might consider spending more time with them. But for now, don't touch what you don't understand. definitely tied into the security system. It's analyzing code. It seems to be going through some sort of encryption sequence, like it's trying to rewrite. It's trying to crack the self-destruct key code. Self-destruct program initiated. What the hell? Computer abort self-destruct. Self-destruct in 10 seconds. Bridge, override all security systems. I can't, Captain. Five seconds. I'm locked Four. out. Three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Meddling with things you don't understand again? You know, I think I'm learning something here. Hubris. That's what I don't like about you people. Your ignorance of the working of the galaxy is unparalleled, and yet you continue to blunder ahead as if you knew what were going on. The Borg, on the other hand, really seem to know what they're about. If only they had more personality. In fact, if they had any personality, I might consider spending more time with them. But for now, don't touch what you don't understand. Oh, Sprint. You're dead. Half a billion gigawatts will do that to you. Mm-hmm. Meddling with things you don't understand again? You know, I think I'm learning something here. Hubris. That's what I don't like about you people. Your ignorance of the working of the galaxy is unparalleled, and yet you continue to blunder ahead as if you knew what were going on. The Borg, on the other hand, really seem to know what they're about. If only they had more personality. In fact, if they had any personality, I might consider spending more time with them. But for now, don't touch what you don't understand. Nah, that won't do much of anything. Question is, how do we remove it? Sprint, you're the security officer. What do you think? 